Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life. Alrighty, let's get started for tonight. It is uh, 23 hours and, well, no, exactly 23 hours into the uh, 12th day of November 2012. No, no, 21 in Britterman numbers. When you think about things, sometimes the easy things, like remembering the date, gets lost. <laughs> and so you start flubbing the numbers and the dates just the way I, did, the way I just did. Anyways, this is going to be kind of a deviation, but not I think, kind of a deviation. Because questions and comments that often pop up, and this is a result of a comment that popped up. So if this is your comment, uh, it was in relationship to the, uh, the, the vlog in which I included and talked about flat earthers. And their, well, their lack of understanding in terms of, again, this is an issue of history. If a person is born and actually sort of enters school, let's say uh, from, I'm saying 1990, grade three on up, there is a fundamental disconnect from history. There are things they just simply don't know. And a large chunk of this flat earth issue is a result of this. It's a result of history that's not known. Uh, you're not going to expect schools to have bring in, particularly when talking about advised, uh, revised American history. And this is common for you. It doesn't matter what country you're at. All your history is that is taught officially is revised. Uh, and because the, the, there's a lot of stuff in history that they don't want, and the, the, the people who have things to hide, these sort of upper intellectuals, these upper uh, people want to hide. And this is certainly true for the whole issue of Flat Earth. Flat Earth has been around for a while. It, 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 even though what we're seeing today is a sort of a reiteration, it's, it's a rebirth of what was there initially. The initial flat earth theory was a distraction. The world had been divided into Illuminati and below. And this is the term sheeple. The term sheeple and capital or whatever is not referred to as the people who simply follow along. They're referred to as the sacrificial animal. They're, gonna, they're the ones who are going to be sacrificed to whatever gods they're praying to. And so this is, this is where the concept of flat earth comes from. And it was designed to pull people away from, because the, the, the understanding at the time, this is the pagan understanding, is that uh, the, the magic is limited. It uh, can be possessed physically. You can summon the magic at any point in time you wish, and uh, you are in control. And so what happens, there is a battle over this control. So gems and jewels and so on and so forth are not gems and jewels. Not about, it's not about money. It's about Power. It's about uh, this magical power that everyone wants. Now, ultimately, of course, the ultimate magical power that you could ever, that could, you could ever want is immortality. You're going to live forever, never going to die. Nothing's going to hurt you. Nothing's going to kill you. Well, this was what, what drives a large chunk of the world, and this is what, what where a large chunk of your 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 uh, flat Earth history falls off. The flat earth understanding was devised and proposed to pull people away from the magic. Because in order to understand the magic, you need to understand the concept the concept of a sphere. You move from a circle, which is flat space. This is Euclidean geometry. This is also why Pythagoras did what he did. So Pythagoras was working, uh, not in conjunction in terms of knowing, but sort of in the area that Euclid had been working about, but focusing primarily on the triangle. Why the triangle? Well, do trigonometry. Trigonometry is based on the triangle. Why is it the triangle? Because they can use the triangle to work on the uh, on the angles of a circle. This is, these are degrees, radians, and uh, uh, and and all the called so the polar coordinates. Right? You have the Cartesian coordinates, and you have polar coordinates. 
What are polar coordinates? Well, they're for anything with, that deals with an angle. You're getting into circular geometry. And as once you get into the circular geometry beyond the flat geometry, and this is what not a lot of people, not so a lot of people love. What I have to do math, you know, not even have to do math. You have to do a history of geometry. You have to understand the difference between uh, flat space geometry and curved space geometry uh, of the flat and curve. And this is even in the two dimensional plane. Uh, to give you, to bring this, bring this into a better concept of of, of this nature of the spherical notes. And this is, goes back into ley lines and uh, sacred earth frequencies. Uh, this is what 5G was about. 5G was about these uh, broadcast towers interfering with uh, sacred frequencies. Uh, it had nothing to do with about electricity. The, the, again, the, the understanding of radio, the understanding of sound is completely misunderstood, but still nonetheless... Uh, Away we go. The whole area is basically and fundamentally gnosis. This is knowledge, the knowledge of the beyond. It should be called metanosis because meta means beyond. And this is, is this is how you have now the metaverse being talked about. It's because the humanist universe, the world of the humanist. Uh, this is where Vol this is where Voltaire, this is where Lionel sits. They were the humanists, convinced that science and mathematics were the ultimate truth. Well, when the atomic bomb occurred, which wasn't supposed to happen theoretically, no one in the terms of the mathematical sense got it to go, uh, it was done by an experimentalist. It was never predicted. And so when you had the atomic bomb go off in uh, 1945 being dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you couldn't hide that from the world. So uh, uh, the... The world of the humanists began to collapse. This is where you have the surrealists. This is like Salvador Dali. This is where you have the postmodernists come in. These were the uh, beatniks, uh, and there were two forms. The beatniks were typically uh, your nihilists. They were the ones who were peace and love. They were, uh, you know, t essentially nonviolent. But uh, uh, they believed that the world was basically a concept, and you could do anything you wanted to do. This is what you see from a lot of liberals. But what happens is when their ideas are threatened and their world starts to collapse, they become very violent. And this is where the next part comes in, because there was another group called the anarchists. The anarchists were the people on in the postmodern sphere who believed that you just things didn't happen on the world, that they had to be proactive. And what they mean by proactive is they got into this thing called deconstructionism. Well, basically, that means rioting. Everything you see at G8, everything we saw during the uh, the, the Trump uh, election, uh, all that was uh, postmodernist. These, these were the anarchists. This and this is typical anarchy. You can do, see this in Europe. You can see this at uh, the WTO meetings. Um, anywhere where you see people smashing windows and wearing black balaclavas and balaclavas and and doing these type of things, those are your anarchists. And these people believe. That they that they're put into position there that they are there to destroy the establishment to tear it down to re in, in order to burn it down so that it can be rebuilt and in, in, in the process of rebuilding this is why you have Biden having the plan along with Pelosi and the Democrats and build back better why because they burnt the United States to the ground and now they're going to build it back up they, and then to do this they use the anarchists and now they're going to be able to build back better. This is what this is what this is progressive by nature. You have all these people dying in the hospitals. Great. Why? Because now you can build back better. This is progress. This is progress by definition. People who believe in the destruction of others and other things are progressives. This is how progress occurs. And this is this is deep within the history of of well basically Hegel. This is this is the element of the Hegelian dialectic. And Hegel was not it was not a humanist. He was a Gnostic. He believed in the beyond. And he used humanism so that the humanists would destroy themselves, which they did. And this was again written about by Dostoevsky. Read Dostoevsky's uh, uh, book, uh, Crime and Punishment. It is about a humanist, and you'll see the path he takes. And at the end of the book, uh, this is a spoiler alert, he commits suicide. 
but th- his suicide is symbolic in, 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 in the sense that he does commit suicide, but he sings this as an, act, an ultimate act of symbology in terms of the supreme control of the human being. That there is no beyond. That's all, that, that, that when the human life ends, that's it. That's the end. And you control when your human life ends. Before the next the, the step prior to self-destruction on the humanist path is random destruction. Kill and maim and destroy everything for no particular reason. It's all random. And then you continue forward. And this is why we're going, going to today, we're bringing this forward to t- today, even though we're still talking about ley lines, because ley lines is deep within Gnosis. You can't, you can't understand ley lines if you don't understand Gnosis. And the thing is, you can look the term up and can see where it comes from. Because all of your mathematics come from there, all of your geometry comes from there. I mean, what do you think an alchemist is? And an alchemist is your Gnostic scientist, your Gnostic mathematician. They were used to calculate the coordinates of again, not only the stars, but all of your magic was done by that. And so, at least today, today to the to the Rittenhouse, Rittenhouse case, well, he's seeing uh, Lionel's talking about a mistrial. This is what he's saying. But the thing is, the judge isn't calling a mistrial. That means because there's something else going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing. And we see today, we see that 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 things have been recently, in terms of the realities, and this has to do with uh, doctors bringing forward their clinical data into in, into the trial room, and the judge is simply tossing everything out and just ignoring everything that's going on. Why? Because the judges don't understand it. In order for you to get something across to somebody, you have, you have to make sure they understand what they're hearing. If they do not understand what they're hearing, they're going to dismiss it. And this is why you, you, the doctors, the MDs, the researchers are not many, making any traction, any headway in the courtrooms whatsoever. Because the courtrooms do not understand, the juries do not understand, and there's no way you can get this education across to them. It is just too complex, too far beyond them. And the thing is, I'm not breaking this up because, because you can't say, oh, X, Y, and Z on YouTube. I'm, I find ways around these different things. I, you know, you know, there is a, 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 a something to be said for them. I mean, this it, censorship has always been around. I mean, this is why Voltaire was a playwright. Even though he was a philosopher, he was a play, playwright. Why? Well, because the way to get your information out there was to put it into plays. And people, oh, you're watching a fiction. We're all watching a nice show. No, because there's, me- there's a message in it. The message in the show, in the writing of the script, that's how the Da Vinci Code emerges. Why do you think everyone's looking at books and looking at these codes and doing this mathematic on, on, on the spelling of different words? And That's all Da Vinci Code. It's been there for a long time. And I think it's, it, it's been there long enough uh, you know that you have even Shakespeare you have the argument of, of over Shakespeare. Who wrote it, Francis Bacon or Frank or, or William Shakespeare? I argue that it's William Shakespeare. Why? Because he's lower down than than than, uh, than Francis Bacon was. So, well, how does he know all the stuff that's going on? Well, I am in a Greek church. Most of my my the, the Greeks in my church uh, are all basically they own restaurants and stuff like that. And you should hear the stuff they say. What happens is when there are people around who are on upper level a different class level than you are. The lower class, particularly the servile class, the servant class, tends to be invisible. So they will say things in front of the servant class as if the servant, as if the servant's not even there. So who knows the dirt? The higher up people or the or, or the servants? The servants no more. And so the, the things, this is where you, you find them in music, you find them in, in, in the, 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 the bards, the, the, um, the, rov- the roving minstrels. This is how your news got around. Music in the early days was the news. Before you had the news, you had music. And this, this is this shouldn't be lost on people because you know. <laughs> but again, if you don't understand history, you can't go back into history in terms of finding out what what actually what actually happened. Then of course you're not going to understand. But the thing is, getting into where this sort of the flat Earth is that flat Earth is question. Well, we'll bring in another term, term, or actually a word or name, Fibonacci. 
when you look at what's going on with the ley lines and the structure of the ley lines, and you begin to understand that the sphere, the concept of the sphere in, in solid geometry, the spherical geometry, was well before Plato, the play, the, a large chunk of our understanding of spherical geometry, and the geodes, comes through Plato. That's early in, in, in that, that's, these are the Greek philosophers. But the thing is, there was, there was before the Greek philosophers. And the thing is, you'll find the stuff in the Egypt, Egyptian pyramids, you'll find this all over the place. And what you'll find, and they find, because this is why they do the, the mathematics of, of, of patterns and stuff like that. They're finding these patterns all over the place. It looks like, in terms of, basically, you have the Mandelbrot and Julia set. These are the, these are the fractal sets that are computer done by computer generation. Well, what you see, even even when you're looking at viruses in in uh, so-called these three dimensions, three dimension, three dimensional configurations, is that you're seeing the Julia and Mandelbrot sets. You're seeing fractal geometry. Uh, on a microscopic level, in, 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 three, in, in a three-dimensional form, so instead of having a two-dimensional uh, uh, fractal, you now have a three-dimensional fractal. And we do, we do have three dimensions. We have, we know, because we see death, we don't see 2D, we see 3D. And yet, uh, we, we, the maps itself, the, the, the maps themselves, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, is the map is the three-dimensional projection into a two-dimensional plane. It's a projection of this. Again, we're getting into optics. We're getting into uh, geometric structure. And the, fr uh, the, fr the fractal is, is a geometry set that repeats itself. Well, where do we see this before? Because they, they're finding this on Mars. They're finding this on other planets. Oh, look, there, there must be ley lines up there. But not necessarily because you need to remember uh, this is something that Fibonacci had worked on, that there was a pattern to pattern to creation. And this is what Fibonacci had been working on. And guess who, who was working with working on Fibonacci's work? Da Vinci. So what happens, in order to go understand Da Vinci, you have to go back to Fibonacci. When you get to, to Fibonacci, you have to get into the Greeks, you have to get into Plato, you have to get the Pythagoras, you have to get into Euclid, and then you have to get into three-dimensional geometry. These things are all very complex and not well understood. And it, it, it just, it, it just you, you can bring it backwards and forwards. And you see that we're not talking about NASA anymore. We're not talking about, oh, oh the government lies to us. Yeah, okay, the government lies to us. But this is way beyond what the government, this is, this is so far beyond what the government talks about. This is a stuff that's hidden, is not allowed into the thing. This is the hidden and forbidden knowledge. It's the knowledge of the secret earth, the geometries, the, sac the sacred geometries, the sacred frequencies, uh, sacred frequencies. The amount that was changed after 1500 AD, this includes the calendar. Prior to 1500 AD, the calendar was astronomical. You could divine all types of things. It was the magical calendar. Because it had all the astronomical significance, in it. you could actually play, uh, place planetary positions. This is where you're talking about a spherical understanding, not a plane understanding or two-dimensional understanding. You're flat. You have to have the sphere for this. And they understood this with the phases of the moon. The, 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 the and they also talk about something called precession. Again, there's a frequency within the. Procession. This is where your numerology, you're doing up numbers. What numbers actually mean? Well, well, you're looking for particular patterns in the number. Well, there's procession. There's there's frequency. There's a whole variety of mathematics in there. But the thing is, if this is all magic and you want to keep as much magic for yourself as you can, you want to push as many people as way as you possibly can. This began in 1500. This began with the changing of the calendar. Then they changed. They changed the ma the uh, measuring system. So today, there is such a fundamental disconnect from history that there's no really no real way to get back to what was initially there. And so this is what you're saying as you're looking at the stuff, you look at it and say, well, is this the government lying to us? And the answer is, well, yes, 
but at the same time, the understanding of the flat earth does not exist anywhere in history. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about official history. I'm not talking about the revised history. I'm talking about the real history, the stuff that is not presented in your standard textbook and it's very difficult to find. And this is what makes it so complex. It does take, it takes years to put together enough of a library because I'm just watching one now on ley lines because these, these are ley lines and these grids that uh, sort of circumnavigate the globe and sort of produce a sort of like, almost like the grid lines of latitude and longitude, but they come out in different uh, shapes and frequencies. Take a bell and ring it. That's a three-dimensional object. The bell is a three-dimensional object. It's not, well, here it is. Take a three-dimensional bell, hit it, here it rings. Take a plastic jar with lid off, hit it, and hear what it sounds like. Take your paper, right, the two-dimensional drawing of the, of the bell or that, hit it, see what it sounds like. And you'll begin to understand the difference between the two-dimensional uh, understanding of the world and the, three dim the third dimensional sound where you have sound moving through the third dimension. Well, the same understanding of sound moving in the third dimension can be seen in earthquakes and understandings of the sort of the, called the frequency of the earth. And there is a frequency of the earth. And the thing is that the ancients knew and understood about earthquakes. They knew it was sound and vibration. They just, their, their goal, the mythology is in why the earthquake occurred, not what the mechanism was. And so when we go back into history, and this is how it connects to today, and to BLM, Black Lives Matter, is you understand that there was a hidden world, the Gnostic world. All your kings and queens, your imperial courts were Gnostic. And they had these fundamental beliefs. And what happens is that what we call racism was because the people who were considered to be not white were considered to be a animal animalistic defect of human beings. That these were subhumans, they weren't full human beings. This is the origin of the racism. This is the origin of systemic racism. And the people who are who believe in magic power, I mean, this is why it's important to study this. You need to take a look at this. Why? Because this is who the shadow government is. Lionel's always talking about the shadow government. Well, this is who they are. Just like doing work on, black, on a black hole. You don't know where the black hole is. But you can tell what the black hole is by looking at the, the, at the uh, effect that it has on the surrounding environment. And, and, and the thing is, is, this is how a large chunk of research is done. You don't necessarily know what you're looking for in the beginning. But you look around and you just try to say, okay, well, what? <laughs> why is this scene different from the other one? How does one picture compare it to another? You know, what are the differences? You do this enough, and you can start, you, you, particularly in conjunction with taking pictures of certain uh, uh, mechanisms, then you begin to understand. Because you, you can see, okay, I did this in here, in this terms of mechanism, but I see this and this, uh, I see the same picture that I see in the mechanism, I see it over here in the sky. And I now understand that, that this mechanism is now working in the sky. Same mechanism. And it's done by observation, it's not... This isn't mathematics. The ones who work on mathematics to do work, the theoretical work, the mathematical model, are all working on the da Vinci code. They're trying to predict things. Where the experimentalist and the explorer, the observationist, which I am, I'm an ob observationist, I'm an explorer, I do observation, I'm there to learn things. I don't know what I'm getting into. This is something that I have to experience. I have to become in many ways, one with the environment in order to understand it better. Am I going to miss things? Yeah, sure. That, 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 that's par for the course. I expect it. I don't expect to, pre to predict what's going to happen. But yet, what, ha what happens in schools? What are you taught in science? You're taught to predict. And now, this is the same thing with the IPPC, uh, IPCC. Uh, again, they're working on models. It, these are theor theorists. Everything goes on at Davos. Everything goes at the UN. All these think tanks. These are all theorists. These people have no sense of reality. And so we understand why we're seeing what we're seeing today. 
And so what happens, where do you see conspiracy theorists? Well, BLM is one form of conspiracy theory, but so are the flat earthers. They interconnect. And it's because they don't have enough sense of history in order to understand that they're wrong. They may have a strong belief, but belief is not enough. You have to have that history. You have to be able to place why you're thinking the way you're thinking and have, has somebody else thought this before. Don't listen to other people in terms of taking their world word as gospel. Listen, okay, yeah, very nice. Jot, jot your notes down, put it on the shelf, and wait till you see if you can find somebody else and see what they say. Compare ideas, compare thoughts, can compare points of view. This is analysis. This is open analysis. This is exploration. Anyways, uh, as I said, this also leads into aliens because... For a long time, I was stumped on certain things in terms of the alien understanding. But I realized, as I was, I had worked on it for two years almost straight. I couldn't come to an answer. I was just sort of deadlocked. So I walked off and did something else. This is the way I do here, right? I'm out here doing uh, uh, observational atmospheric, atmospheric, atmospheric physics and acoustical physics. It gets boring, so I'm doing this. This is part of our discussion. Our observation log is, is part of our thing, and I'm looking at other things. I don't have one project. I have many projects going. And so I went off to another project, and that is the whole concept of the whole UFO thing, just in terms, particularly on the alien abduction, just really wasn't working out. Uh, and then as I was doing something else, I stumbled across something within the other field that initially didn't make any sense to me, but then as I started listening to it, and found other sources, I hit the bell. This, this is the answer to UFOs. I began to realize that the whole UFO thing, Area 51, all that stuff, these were all psyops. If you can convince people that something is real and make them afraid, you can control them. This is what it's about. It's about fear and control. It's about, cre it's about creating the psychological reality. The world we're living in, why are we in deceit so much? Why is it all talk talking about Everything is bullshit. All this stuff is a lie because it's created that way. It's created to confuse us. It's created, it's created to create fear. So that fear controls us. And when they control the fear, they control us. This is why people double vax and everything else are still walking around with masks. It's a fear factor. They're working on fear. This is a psychological operation. A large chunk of the world is a psychological operation. And it doesn't go back to Jung, it goes back to Freud, Edward Bernays, and his aunt, Anna Freud. Look those two paths up and you'll find a huge chunk there. A huge chunk there. Anyways, uh, it's freezing cold. I've got one more thing to do. I've got my transitions video to film uh, and then go inside. We are Cyborg Alpha. Infinite Tween and Middle School for Life.